The New York Knicks are 4-5 and five so far through the 2024 NBA season as they lost to the Indiana Pacers on Sunday. And the hottest topic surrounding this team is what is going on with Mikhail Bridges. On today's video, I'm going to break down a lot of thoughts out there that the Mikhail Bridges trade was a bad move for the New York Knicks and that Leon Rose got fleeced by the Brooklyn Nets. My question to you, though, before we dive into today's video is this. Would you undo this trade if you could? Were the New York Knicks sent Boyan Bogdanovich, Shake Milton, and Mamadou Diakite to Brooklyn, including four unprotected first-round picks, a first-round pick from the Milwaukee Bucks for this upcoming draft, and a 2028 first-round pick swap? Essentially, you gave up salary and six first-round picks for Mikhail Bridges. Would you undo this trade if you could? Type Y for yes. Type in for no. You're watching Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. Appreciate everybody for stopping by. And let's get into it. Look, I'll say this. As someone that thought, dreamed, urged, and wanted the Knicks to go out and trade for Mikhail Bridges to complete the Nova Knicks, I'm man enough to sit up here and say this. The New York Knicks absolutely 100% overpaid to have Bridges go from Brooklyn to the New York Knicks. Look, you gave up six, four unprotected first-round picks, a first-round pick that's probably going to be in the lottery that comes from the Milwaukee Bucks and a future first-round pick swap. You gave up everything you had for Mikhail Bridges, and so far the returns on the investment have not been profitable. This is not the Bridges. This is not the Mikhail Bridges that Leon Rose, myself, and New York Knicks fans out there that wanted Bridges on this team that they thought they were getting. This is not the guy that you gave up all of what you had to get. Overall, like, there's been a lot of problems with his game. And the reason he was such an attractive piece and why we thought he was the last puzzle piece to the puzzle was because he did everything at a solid level. He could score. He could shoot. He could defend. This year, he's only averaging 15 points per game, and he seems like an afterthought in the offense. And even when the defenses are hiding guys like Trey Young on him, as well as other small guards, the Knicks don't play through him. But most importantly, the main reason you traded for him, two things, his defense and his outside shooting. And his outside shooting has been terrible shooting less than 32% from three. I get it. Nine games into the season, he might be going through a cold shooting stretch, but, man, it has been really bad to start this year. Bridges is shooting 30.9% on catch-and-shoot three-pointers. Throughout his career, he's been 38-plus. 38, 38, 38, 40. For some reason, the jump shot has gone missing. But more than that, he can't make a three Unless it is in the corner. I'll take it. 41.7% from the left corner. Awesome. 58.5% from the right corner. On 17 attempts, I would adventure to say that that is the highest percentage in the NBA. But outside of the corners, he's quite literally the worst shooter in the NBA. He is 5 of 13 on three-pointers that are not from the corner. To reference and to put that into more of a colorful picture the guy shot 35.6 percent above the break last year this year just 15.2 percent he is 8 of 32 from deep in his last four games it's not been good but I do have faith in Bridges shot to come along the guy has been a 38 plus percent three-point shooter throughout his career I believe that he is going to find the range. I believe he is going to settle in. The jump shot is different. He is shooting at a higher release point, and it's more of a line drive. And as you watch these games, it seems like every single miss from Bridges, that's not in the corners, is too much on a line drive and too short. I wonder if the change in shooting form, he has lost his power, and he is shooting too much with his arms because every single shot is a clank off the front rim. I want to go to this tweet from XJ on Twitter. Awesome Twitter follow. Check him out. He does a lot of work on the Knicks. He's got his own podcast, and he also used to contribute as well for Knicks Film School. 
He quote tweeted Nick's Muse where they said, I feel like every Knicks fan knows deep down that we completely overpaid for Mikael Bridges. He said, I got killed for saying this on a pod the day after the trade. They also aren't getting to the best out of what he has to offer, in my opinion. It's a reply that I like the most. He said, I'll also add that overpaying in a vacuum is not necessarily a bad thing. You just have to maximize the player once you acquire them. And I don't necessarily think that Tom Thibodeau and the New York Knicks have put Mikael Bridges in the best spot to be successful. They are sticking him in the corners. He is a dribble handoff corner boy, and he's chasing around point guards. Never throughout his career has he been a guy that is someone that will guard opposing teams' point guards. He can't guard Trey Young too quick, too fast. He can't guard Tyrese Halliburton. We saw that last night. I don't want him on Tyrese Maxey if we play him in the playoffs. I want Bridges and OG to do what they do best, which is guard opposing wings. I want long, lengthy, athletic stoppers on the wing. A defensive attack behind your point of attack defender. That is why I have pushed for Miles McBride to be in the starting lineup so he could be your point of attack defender. So you have two wing defenders behind him. And you have Josh Hart coming off the bench and he can replace any three of those guys in the rotation. I know it hasn't been good. And I know it's been pretty. And despite the overpay, which I am unwilling to admit the Knicks did overpay, but sometimes you got to pay to be the boss and scared money don't make money. And if you really like something, you really got to go out and pay for it and sometimes overpay for it. I still think it could work. I think, still think it will work. But if it doesn't improve and Bridges plays at the level he's been playing at, the New York Knicks are going to be in the play-in. It's that simple. The season's been up and down because the Knicks' performance from their top players have been up and down. And it is a star league. It is a superstar league. And the reason you traded for Bridges is because he was a superstar in his role. Or at least you thought he could be that guy. You need him to be significantly better. If not, this season will be over quick, and it's going to be ugly to watch every single night. Mikhail, we all believe in you. We all think you could be that great player. We're already over a tenth of the way through the season, my man. We're almost an eighth of the way through the season. You need to step it up ASAP. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Sub for Nick Stubbs. You want the Knicks to go on a winning streak? You want to win their next five? Subscribe to the channel and help us reach our goal of 56,000 subscribers. We're just about 550 away. If you love the Knicks and you want free videos every single day, subscribe to the channel. Coming up next, we got to react to Knicks versus Pacers, a game that I thought the Knicks blew, had a double-digit lead in the second half in the fourth quarter where the Knicks needed to be their best. They simply were not. We'll talk more about that around the corner. But first, I got to give a major shout-out to today's sponsor, DraftKings, our proud sports book partner. When you use that promo code NICKSCHAT, you're going to get $200 in free bets when you make your first $5 wager. The Emirates NBA Cup is here. You can win big getting in on the action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All 30 teams split into six groups every Tuesday and Friday playing for the right to advance in the single elimination in-season tourney, culminating in the NBA Cup championship in Vegas. First time, here's something special just for you. New DraftKings customers bet $5 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook. Every point counts. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code NICKSCHAT. That's code NICKSCHAT for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort Kansas, 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash bballl. Shout out to our proud sportsbook partner, DraftKings. Smitty same game parlay here. I think it's going to be a shootout. On Monday Night Football. Give me the Dolphins Rams over 48 and a half. Tyreek Hill, Cooper Cup, the superstars in this matchup. Give me them both to find the paint and get in the end zone. Anytime touchdowns. This parlay is plus 700. Bet $20. 
and you win 140 on DraftKings. Keep in mind, though, these lines and odds are subject to change. Bet with our proud sportsbook partner, DraftKings. Get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks. Shout out to DraftKings and shout out to the Dolphins on the over. I need my guy Jalen Waddle in the paint fantasy football game on the line. Need him to show up, unlike the New York Knicks did in the second half in the loss against the Indiana Pacers. A lot of reasons the Knicks lost this game. A lot of things we could point to. I'll keep it pretty simple. It's a math equation these days in the NBA. You made seven threes. I don't think you made a three in the second half. unless You didn't make a three until the final five minutes of this fourth quarter if you did make one. And they made 21. They shot 45% from three. If you make 21 threes and you shoot above 45%, I'd say you have about a 99.9% .9 chance to win the game. Knicks did not do that. Their defense in the fourth quarter was just not good enough. The Indiana Pacers scored 40 points in the final frame. And look, everyone just needs to be better, and I want this guy to be better. They need this guy to be better. Six first-round picks. You didn't trade six first-round picks for a guy that's a triple single and shooting below 36% from the field and now under 32% from three. Needs to do a better job on defense. Be physical with Tyrese Halbert. I get it. He's quick. He's a guard. He operates in the pick and roll extremely well. But we traded for a guy that's supposed to be a stopper on defense. What sucks about this game is Jalen Brunson got it going offensively. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns had it going offensively. You get 33 from Brunson. You got another 30 from Carl Anthony Towns. He shoots above 64% from the field. Not enough threes, though. I need more threes at him. Love seeing him be a playmaker. Had a couple of early turnovers early in the game, but I thought he really had a stranglehold on the pace, and when the Knicks went on their run, JV was the one cooking in the kitchen, 33-10-6. Can't really say anything about, a, at that, about that performance from the captain. Also, another good game from Carl Anthony Towns on the offensive end. Thing is, on the defensive end, he is lost in the pick and pop. How many times have we seen Miles Turner just kill this team from three? I, I've seen enough of Carl Anthony Towns and drop coverage against bigs that can pop and shoot. Nothing to complain on offense. I still think that he is an elite offensive player. His rim protection has been suspect, picks up a lot of fouls, and maybe he's hindering your defense more than we would have thought. But it was the perimeter defense I had a problem with. OG was awesome on offense, too. He was the guy that was carrying you all night long. An awesome offensive performance. I thought he did a good job on Pascal Siakam. But, man, who the hell was guarding Benedict Matherin? Who the hell was guarding Tyrese Halliburton? Those guys combined for, like, 60 points against you. Benedict Matherin should not be scoring 38 points against the New York Knicks. The, the guys scored almost 80 points combined between Matherin and Halliburton. Your defense has to be better. 121 should be good enough to win a game. 132 points, you're allowed. You're not going to stack many Ws like that. And Tom Thibodeau, can we stop with the six-man rotation? It's November 10th, man. I understand you got injuries to Mitchell Robinson. I understand campaign has injuries, and I understand pressure that you has injuries. There is no reason to be running this team into the dirt in November. It, 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 is, it is frustrating. It is very frustrating. But you know what? You drafted Comb Dottier in the first round, and he doesn't play. Could have drafted a guy like Ryan Dunn, who's playing 17 minutes per game for the Suns. But I, I, I guess... I guess it doesn't matter because Tibbs just doesn't play rookies. One minute for Tyler Kolick, like this team, it uh, it needs it, it needs more depth, man. It, it just does at this point. I don't know what you're gonna do. You're like a hundred dollars away from the second apron. Someone's got to do something. Can't play six men in November and lose to the Pacers, who played Johnny Furphy in this ball game but we can't play anybody else. What's your confidence level in the Knicks to get this right? You lose the Pacers, you lose the Rockets, and you lose to the Hawks. Probably should have won two of those games. Honestly, you should have won all three of those games. You got an easier schedule coming up. You got the Bulls, you got the Wizards, and you got the Sixers, and there's another game in there that was very winnable as well. I think it was actually two games versus the Bulls, and I think a game versus the Nets is coming up. I still believe in this team. It's only nine games in. But, oh man, there are very obvious things that they need to correct. Make sure you are following me on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, at MarshallGreen underscore. Hit me up, and let's go Knicks.